QuickBooks Online 2024 inventory tracking options. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, continuing to lay down those foundational items necessary to be able to process our normal accounting cycle the normal accounting cycle, including the entry of transactions with the use of forms typically found under the new button, having the sub cycles within the full accounting cycles of the customer cycle or revenue cycle, vendor cycle or expense cycle, employee cycle or payroll cycle. As we enter these transactions, we communicate with the people we do business with customers, vendors, and employees in the centers on the left, sales center or customer center, expense center or vendor center, and the payroll center or employee center. In prior presentations, we set up the company. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't wanna be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must have product because the fact as everyone knows of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We went into the cog, which usually has those foundational items we need to lay down. We looked at some of the items under the your company area, including the account settings and the users. And now we're focused in part on the lists here including the chart of accounts as we try to pull in our beginning balance from a prior system that we are imagining was our prior accounting system. So here are our beginning balances and we're gonna be moving into this inventory item, pulling that into the system. Noting that we saw that the original strategy we might have when setting up these beginning balances in our new accounting system, you might think I'll just do a journal entry. That would be the easiest thing to do, but we can't typically do that because many of these accounts have special needs such as subledgers, such as the accounts receivable needing to be broken out by customer. The inventory, if we're tracking inventory in the system, needing to be broken out by the items of inventory. That's gonna be our point of focus here. This is often the most confusing, most difficult system if we're tracking inventory within our QuickBooks system. Now note, before we get into that, I just wanna to touch on different ways that you might be tracking inventory because oftentimes we feel like because QuickBooks has an inventory tracking system on a perpetual basis, that's the only thing that we can do. How, and if you're not doing it that way, then somehow maybe you might think you're doing it wrong or someone else is doing it wrong. That's not necessarily the case. The question is what's gonna be the best accounting system for you and your business. So you might therefore use a perpetual inventory system, tracking it within QuickBooks, but you might also use a periodic type of inventory system. So let's talk about the differences between those before we go back in and enter our inventory items. So if I see an account that has inventory on it, the question is, am I tracking that within my QuickBooks system or do I have some external kind of tracking system that I'm uh, going to be using. The first thing to note is that inventory will usually, but possibly not always, throw us out of the most simple kind of cash-based system. Let's understand why that is the case by jumping on over to a flowchart. This is the QuickBooks desktop homepage flowchart, but we're just looking at the flow of the forms, which will basically be the same for any type of accounting system. 
So when we think about inventory, the problem is it kind of goes into both cycles, meaning we're going to be purchasing the inventory, which we can think of as part of the vendor cycle or uh, these, the purchases cycle or the accounts receivable cycle, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to sell the inventory, which could be thought of as part of the customer cycle or the sales cycle. So why is that the case? Most type of transactions are only part of one cycle or the other. So for example, normally on the vendor side of things, if I'm paying the phone bill or if I'm paying any other type of expense, it's all in the vendor side of things generally. And then if I look at the customer side, obviously when I sell uh, services, for example, instead of inventory, that's going to be following through the flow on, on the sales side. It's not going to really dip into the vendor side. Why does inventory cause us a problem? Because we're going to usually want to move away from a cash based system onto an accrual based system. Let's first think about the simplest system, a cash based system with inventory and why that might cause us some problems. So let's say we sell inventory. We sell guitars in our case. When I purchase the inventory, if I purchase it with a, whether it be a bill form or an expense form or a check type of form, then normally we think of it, if it was a cash, well, if it was a cash based system, you would think that we would just expense the cost at the point of purchase. That's what a cash based system would do. We would decrease the checking account. The other side go into the income statement, which what's going to be the inventory expense account. It's called cost of goods sold. So you might just expense it right when you purchase it to cost of goods sold. And then when you actually sell the inventory, what would then happen under the cash based system with either an invoice or a sales form, you would sell the inventory. And instead of reducing the inventory at the point of sale on a cash based system, you would just record the normal thing you would record for a service business, which would be an increase to revenue and an increase to accounts receivable or cash. What's the problem with that? Well, one, we're not tracking the inventory if we were to do it that way, right? If I, if I just purchase the inventory and I put it on the income statement as cost of goods sold, the income statement are temporary accounts, which will close out uh, to the balance sheet. So I'm not, if I have a significant amount of inventory on the books, then I'm not tracking the inventory. I'm not managing my inventory well. I'm just expensing it when I purchase it in a similar way as you might do with like supplies, for example. When you buy supplies, you might buy a lot of paper and ink and whatnot, but you might not be managing it like inventory. You're just going to wait till the stockpile goes down and then you're not formally tracking it uh, on the books as an asset type of account. Although you might have some internal controls over the supplies, depending on how much supplies you have. Uh, and, and again, you could treat supplies in a similar way as inventory if it's a significant amount of, of stuff. But the way we think about supplies is the same way that we can think about tracking inventory on its simplest kind of method, which would be a cash based method. So the other problem is from a revenue recognition standpoint, if we were just to expense the inventory when we purchase it, then we expense the inventory before we generated the revenue. And that's not really what we want to do on a revenue recognition side from an accrual standpoint. I want to recognize the expense, not when we paid for it, but when we consumed the asset in order to help us generate revenue. That's why when we create the invoice and the sales receipts, those are the triggering forms in a perpetual inventory system to not only record the sales side of things, but also the cost of goods sold and the reduction of the inventory. Now, if you have inventory where you don't have a lot of inventory on hand, let's say you just you get a project and you you buy the materials for a particular project and then you create it and you sell the project right after you you buy the materials. So in that case, you have somewhat of a job cost system and you don't really have a lot of inventory on hand. Therefore, the cash based system might be appropriate. So if I'm going to if I was to make a guitar, if I was somehow able to just make a guitar, right? And someone comes in, they say, I want a custom guitar. And I go out and buy the materials specifically for that guitar. And I simply expense them when I purchase them to cost of goods sold. And then I finish the guitar and let's pretend the turnaround time is very short, like a, like a one day to a week. 
then I'm just going to turn around and sell the guitar right after I bought the material specifically for that guitar. So in that case, you do still have a timing difference because you would have recorded the expense before you recorded the revenue. But because we're assuming the timings are pretty close in period and because we're buying the material specifically for a, uh, per a particular project, you might use the project tracking or job cost kind of system to help you out with that as well, then you might be able to get away with that, right? Because you're not basically having a whole lot of inventory on hand. That's That would be the simplest thing to do, which again, usually would be in a job cost kind of system where possibly you're, you're, you're buying stuff for a specific job. So that would still be on a cash-based system. However, if you're holding on to a significant amount of inventory, like a retail store, or for buying the guitars from a vendor, marking them up and then selling them, then it's likely that we're gonna have a significant amount of, of the guitars on, on stock. In that case, we can't just do a cash-based system because we're gonna wanna track the units of guitars that we have on hand and the cost of the guitars and we're going to want to be matching out because there could be a significant lag in time between when we purchase the guitars and then when we sell the guitars so in that case on the vendor side when we purchase our inventory guitars in our case then we're going to want to put it on the books as inventory not simply expense it and then when we sell the inventory with the invoice or the sales forms, that's when we want to decrease the inventory and record the cost of goods sold. Now, if you're doing a perpetual inventory system within the QuickBooks system, that means what's going to happen is when you purchase the inventory, it's not only going to put the dollar amount on the books, it's also going to be putting on the books the units that were purchased on the books. So now you're tracking both units and dollar amount. And then when you sell the inventory, it's not only tracking the sales price and the cost of goods sold, dollar amounts that will show up on the income statement, it will also be showing the units of inventory that have been uh, decreased. That's great. And, and if you can do the perpetual inventory system, that would be really nice because you have more internal controls over your inventory system. However, it's tedious to do because that means you have to uh, be pretty meticulous on entering more information into the QuickBooks system and having your items all line up and uh, managing your inventory within QuickBooks. QuickBooks is also somewhat limited depending on the extent of your inventory needs, which means you might have to level up if you have more complex uh, types of inventory needs. However, you could also try to track your inventory outside of QuickBooks and that and then and then run your invent, run your system within quickbooks in a similar way as you would in a service based system in other words when i purchase the inventory maybe i just purchase the inventory i put it on the books as inventory however i'm i'm not going to record it as tracking the inventory within the system and when i sell the inventory I'm just going to record the sales side of the transaction, not the reduction of inventory or cost of goods sold. And then periodically, on a periodic inventory system, I will then make an adjusting entry based on my external account. So those are kind of the methods that you could use, right? You could use a cash-based system, possibly sometimes if, if you have a limited amount of inventories, just expensing the inventory like you normally would with any other expense. Uh, the timing difference will be off, but you're not holding on to a lot of inventory, so you might be able to get away with that. Or if you have to track inventory, the choices are perpetual inventory system that tracks every time you purchase and sell inventory or periodic inventory system, which means that it's a simpler data input into the system, and then you do periodic adjustments to the inventory. So let's go back on over and show you what I mean here. So... If I hit the drop down within QuickBooks, when we purchase the inventory, we're usually going to use an expense form or a uh, bill form. Uh, we might start with a purchase order, but let's just go right to the expense form. Note there's two categories down here. If you were to be using a perpetual inventory system, you would generally have to use a product and not only use a product, but add the product as 
a uh, inventory, uh, a, an inventory item that you would then be tracking. And we'll show how to set that up shortly. It would be like the service items we did before, but now you would be tracking the inventory. If on the other hand, you were tracking the inventory externally and you were simply making the purchase over here, you could then, instead of using the item, just record it to the inventory account. You're increasing inventory. In this case, you would only be increasing the dollar amount of inventory, but you would not be tracking the inventory uh, by, by the item. Or you might still use items down here, but say it's an item that you're not tracking inventory with. In other words, I'm gonna close this out if I go down to my transactions, when we when we set the inventory up, I'm sorry, sales, and then products and services, when I add a new piece of inventory, it could be a service inventory, inventory item, that's the one you would use to track perpetually. You can call it a non-inventory item, meaning you're recognizing in QuickBooks that it is a piece of inventory, but you're not tracking it as inventory on a perpetual system within QuickBooks, possibly using some other kind of method uh, to track the inventory. And then when you sell the inventory with an invoice or sales receipt form or possibly a deposit, but if I use an invoice form, then when we sell the inventory, we're going to be selecting the product. If we have the product that we're selling as set up as an inventory item, it will record the sale of the inventory. It will record the decrease in the inventory from a, a dollar amount as well as a unit amount price and it will record the related cost of goods sold for the inventory if we're not tracking the inventory within the system when we sell the item because we said it was a non-tracking inventory item it will record only the sales half of the transaction in a similar fashion as if you sold the service items uh, and so it's not going to track the units of inventory or the dollar amount of inventory when you sell the inventory. So then the question is, well, how do you manage the, the, the inventory then if it's not gonna record that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave without saying. So that means that every time I purchase inventory, that means the dollar amount is gonna go up. Let's imagine that we're not using a perpetual inventory system. We're using a periodic inventory system. We're tracking the inventory somewhere outside of uh, the QuickBooks system then what you can do is when you buy the inventory, the dollar amount of inventory is going up, but you're not managing the units of inventory. And then you might count the inventory physical count in an external software. If you're doing a Shopify store or something like that, for example, or you have an Amazon system, then the, the Amazon store or Shopify might be tracking the units of inventory for you. And there, and you, don't, and you might not wanna pull in all of the perpetual inventory transactions into QuickBooks because it could overload your system and cause a lot of confusion. What you might want in QuickBooks in that case is simply the summary of your financial statements and then have the detail of the inventory tracking over here. Now notice if you have a Shopify store or something like that, you might be able to connect uh, those stores uh, to QuickBooks and we have a whole other course or section on that. But just remember, even with those connections, the general idea is, do, do you want to pull in all that inventory data into QuickBooks? Possibly not. The general recommendations are often no, because you can track it outside and you're just going to bog down QuickBooks if you do that. What if you have another system, like you sell something on ground and you have a small store or something like that and you sell items? Well, if you only sell a few items, then you might actually track the inventory on ground, right? And if you were doing a perpetual inventory system, this is basically what happens. And I know this is getting into the weeds. We have a whole nother course on inventory tracking. If you wanna like dive into inventory tracking as a specialty area in and of itself. But when we purchase the inventory, what happens is we're tracking the units of inventory and the unit cost of the inventory to get us uh, the total cost of the inventory. So in this case, we had a beginning balance here of inventory. We purchased another uh, 400 units of inventory. That leaves us with 500 units of inventory. Now in a first in first out layered method, which is what I believe uh, QuickBooks Online uses, note that the cost of the inventory could change. Usually it goes up in times of inflation. 
So that means that even though the units are the same, I have 500 units, some of them cost $50, some of them cost $55. So that that's part of the issue with tracking inventory. The cost of the inventory could change even with the same units of inventory. So then when I sell the inventory, let's say we sell the inventory here, we're selling 420 units, then I have to take off the layers of inventory because I have a layer here that cost $100 and then the rest of them cost $55. So now I'm gonna reduce this whole layer's gone and this layer's going down, uh, uh, is going down, right? So that leaves me with no more of the $100 and of the 400, we're left with 80 units left at the higher price of 55 if we're using first in, first out. This is what you would basically do. This is what QuickBooks is kind of doing when you're doing a perpetual inventory system. If you're doing a periodic inventory system with the same first in, first out, this means we're doing it outside of QuickBooks, right? So now I'm just going to, when I do the purchases, these purchases, let's say for the month, I purchased 400. I saw we were low, so we purchased another 120. I saw we were low, so we purchased another 200. The cost went up of our inventory when we make those purchases, 55, 60, and uh, 62. And when I track the purchases, all I'm recording are the increases in the inventory. I'm not tracking the decreases when we sell the inventory until we actually do a physical count at the end of the period. So when I do a physical count at the end of the period, what do we know? We know how many units of inventory are left and we can do our cost of goods sold equation, which is gonna be our beginning inventory plus what we purchased minus what is left is the difference, meaning that's the units that we assume that we sold. So if, we're, if we were in like a, a shop that we sold like sandwiches or something like that, right, or something, we would say these are our beginning sandwiches that we have on hand. We, if we had five sandwiches on hand and we made another six sandwiches, then, or let's say we, we made uh, 10 sandwiches, now we have 15 sandwiches that could have been sold throughout the day. If at the end of the day, we only have like two sandwiches left, that means, you know, 15 minus two means that we sold uh, 13 sandwiches. Now you might've lost some sandwiches, someone might've stole a sandwich, but that's gonna be the general idea. There's other calculations you can try to think about for shrinkage and stuff like that. So that means that, that I'm only gonna make an adjustment at the end of the period, meaning I'm gonna count how many units I have left, and then I'm gonna do my calculation, my layers calculation here for my cost of goods sold, for my inventory layers, and then do a journal entry. And that journal entry will simply be the debit of the cost of goods sold and a credit to inventory. So we'll just do, meaning we'll decrease inventory and increase cost of goods sold at the end of the month. That would be a periodic inventory system. So we're not gonna do a periodic inventory system here. We're gonna do the more full service, uh, uh, perpetual inventory system, tracking the units within QuickBooks. But I wanna just note that a periodic system might be quite appropriate if you have something like a Shopify store, and again, we have, or an Amazon tracking, where it's tracked in another software, because if you pull in all the data to QuickBooks, the common thought for many people in that space right now is that's just overwhelming amount of data. So you might use, again, a, a, a periodic type of system of some kind. I also note that, and we have a whole nother course or section on that if you wanna dive into that in more detail. And you might also, you might even be even simpler than that. Like you might within your system, when you purchase the inventory, you actually expense it to cost of goods sold at the point that you purchase it. And then you simply make an adjustment at the end of the period, possibly the end of the year, if you're a small business and you're simply trying to get your inventory properly recorded in order to prepare your taxes. If you do that, then you don't even need to do you don't even need to do adjusting entries on a periodic basis. But the periodic adjusting entries, if you're in a small shop or something like that and you were selling sandwiches or something, then you might do a periodic inventory nightly, right? Because every night you would count the inventory and you can make an adjustment. You can, an adjustment on a periodic uh, basis 
that way and that might be a, a, an internal control that you can use so it depends you know what you are doing uh within w with the inventory so there's so don't think that there's only one way to do the inventory we're going to track the inventory this way the most complicated and sophisticated way kind of within the quickbooks system but there are many cases where people would rightly argue i believe that that wouldn't be the best way for a particular uh, business scenario so whatever your business is dig into the weeds on what's the best inventory tracking we have whole other courses or sections on inventory tracking in general cost flow assumptions such as first in first out last in first out specific identification weighted average and um and we also have a course or section on the shopify store and connecting quickbooks and whatnot to the to the shopify or to an amazon or to on ebay if those are uh areas of interest to you